Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and in today's video I wanted to talk about one of the bigger headlines of the post-free agency NBA offseason, and that is the Team USA roster for the 2019 FIBA World Cup. And this is becoming a big story, partially because that's the part of the NBA offseason that we're in, but also because this is becoming a pretty big deal. Players like Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, Anthony Davis, James Harden, Eric Gordon, CJ McCollum, Andre Drummond, Kevin Love, and Paul Millsap are among the all-star caliber players that have already decided not to play in the 2019 FIBA World Cup and thus not be a part of Team USA training camp that's currently going on. And this has led to a tidal wave of memes revolving around who is actually going to play on a Team USA roster that had Landry Shamit turn down an invite to play, which makes me think that, hey, maybe I should get a shot. But even with all of those guys opting out, this is still an immensely talented training camp roster. And I would argue that this roster is actually a more beneficial one for the players and for Team USA basketball as a whole. But I'm gonna get to that point later. Right now I'm gonna talk about why exactly all of these players are deciding to opt out of playing in the World Cup. The first reason is pretty simple. It's not the Olympics. It's certainly a big international event and it's something that is important to a lot of people around the world. But in terms of high profile international events, it isn't as big of a deal as the Olympics. But the bigger reason here has to do with the timing of everything. So the NBA regular season ended in April and even though a couple of these guys like Lillard and McCollum had some pretty deep playoff runs, most of them have had about two months off at this point to prepare for training camp beginning in August, but that's really not the point. It's more about the timing on the back end. World Cup training camp begins in August. The event runs through the middle of September, and then the NBA preseason starts at the end of September, and the regular season starts in mid-October. So for a lot of these guys, that's just too quick of a turnaround to risk injury or adding even more fatigue onto what is already an incredibly long NBA season. Even something as simple as a twisted ankle could derail the beginning of the season or cause a nagging injury, and it's simply not worth risking that this NBA season especially. Because another big point to all this is that this isn't your typical NBA season that we've experienced over the last couple of years, and the league is actually wide open. There's no clear-cut title favorite going into the regular season. There's been a ton of player movement, and some teams are certainly better than others, but players, and rightly so, they don't want to risk their chance of potentially competing for an NBA title, the first chance that a lot of these guys have had in a couple of years to legit compete for that title just to try and make a World Cup roster. And I'm sure NBA teams don't want them playing in it as well, but it isn't just Team USA guys either, as we recently saw Ben Simmons withdraw his name from the Australian national team after signing a max contract extension with Philadelphia. And I really don't blame NBA teams at all for nudging their biggest stars, especially their veteran stars, away from playing in international competition. Ideally, if they're gonna be playing basketball in a game, they're gonna be playing for their team because they're the one paying them, they're the one invested in them. And although I'm sure there's a lot of national pride involved for a lot of the players to want to play for their national team, and that's 100% understandable. Guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo have made comments about how important it would be to them, especially international players, non-USA players, to win a gold medal in the World Cup or in the Olympics, and I 100% get that. But from a logical standpoint, from a financial standpoint, from an investment standpoint, it makes sense for these teams to be like, hey, Maybe you shouldn't play. Maybe you should focus on us. Maybe you should focus on getting as much rest during the off season as you can outside of obviously your skill development and your weight room sessions. Maybe playing in games for another team isn't the best idea for us as a franchise. Now, obviously they can't necessarily force players to not play for the national team unless it's something that is in their contract and explicitly stated, but again, can't really blame them for pushing them in this direction. Okay, so that is why these players are deciding to opt out of the World Cup, but now let's talk about why this could actually be a beneficial thing for the NBA and for Team USA as a whole. And I'm gonna attempt to do that while still being respectful to international basketball competition. However, if we're being honest here, if Team USA sent their best team over to the World Cup, a team that fit well together, including guys like LeBron and Anthony Davis and Kawhi, they're winning the World Cup 99.9 .9 times out of 100. And that is not intended to disrespect international teams in any way. There are some immensely talented teams that are going to be competing for the World Cup, teams that play well together, but it has been shown time and time again that a Team USA puts their best team on the floor and it's a team that fits well together, and I think we all know the exception to the rule that I'm talking about here, 
they are the best team in the world despite the strides that international teams have made over the last couple of years. So the gap between the best that Team USA can put out there and what the rest of the world can put out there on the court is just too much to overcome. We know this, so what really is the point? I mean, yeah, we win the 2019 World Cup, but what does that actually accomplish? Yes, these are fun events to kind of shorten up the basketball offseason for us fans, and I'm sure there are people around the world that care immensely about the World Cup. But most of the time, when you're comparing two American players' legacies, you're really not going to be bringing up international accomplishments. And if you are, you're going to be talking about the Olympics. You're not really going to be talking about World Cup gold medals. So in this particular circumstance, it really isn't a big deal. Yes, Team USA could almost guarantee a win by sending their best team if all the stars decided that they wanted to play. But why not get something else out of it? Because for the younger players that now make up the roster after a lot of the stars backed out, this is incredibly valuable for their development. Being around some of the best coaches in the league, learning how to play with other great players towards a common goal of winning, the skill development sessions against guys they might not normally work out against, that is so much more valuable to guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Bam Adebayo than it is to Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum and Andre Drummond. Getting these young guys this kind of experience should, in theory, take their game up another notch next season, and we've seen the kind of confidence that being on the Team USA senior national team can give to young players in the past, and in my opinion at least, this is ideally what these kinds of events for Team USA should be used for rather than just putting out an all-star team to go crush international competition. Not only that, but these younger guys are less likely to get injured, and even if they did, it wouldn't be as catastrophic to an NBA team season rather than some of the all-stars that did withdraw their names from competition. So in my opinion, again, these are the guys that should be prioritized rather than veteran all-stars. Now, having said that, this team does still have some really good vets like Kemba Walker and Chris Middleton, which is great for them to be the guys for Team USA when they wouldn't normally be, plus they'll be good mentors for the younger guys as well. But I can't stress enough how much better it is for USA basketball to have younger players competing for Team USA rather than well-established all-star caliber vets. This way, they have just as good a chance of winning the event as any other team in the field because it's still an immensely talented roster that should fit well together. These young guys get the experience and development that they wouldn't normally get if these all-stars had been on the team, and the NBA doesn't have to risk their best American stars getting injured in off-season competition. And I already know that there's going to be some complaints to that comment because I know that I do have a relatively large international audience percentage-wise, and I promise you I'm not trying to be overconfident or cocky in saying that Team USA can send essentially like their third best team that they could possibly put together to the World Cup and still win it. But it's just true. It's not cocky. It's not overconfident. This is still a team that's capable of winning the event, even without those big name stars. And it has so many other benefits that I've already mentioned. And with all that said, the last point that I do want to make that Marcus Smart very astutely pointed out not too long ago is that these guys that are competing in the World Cup, I definitely think that they should get priority on being on the next Olympic team when that training camp and that time to select that team does come around. These guys have been putting in the work to be on the World Cup team. There are other players that decided that it wasn't worth it to play on this World Cup team, which again, in my opinion, is absolutely the smart thing to do for a lot of players. But when the Olympics roll around, give these guys a chance first. Like if Jason Tatum wants to be on the Olympic team when it rolls around and he makes this World Cup roster, then give him priority and let him be on the Olympic team if he wants to. Same thing with Kemba, same thing with Chris Middleton. I think that's only the right thing to do. And I think it's very smart by Marcus Smart, ironically, to point that out. I think it was a great point on his part. And this could even be where this ends up going, where if Team USA decides that the guys on this World Cup roster would get priority for Olympic team spots, and then maybe they don't perform as well, maybe they don't win a gold medal in the Olympics or in the World Cup, then maybe some of these stars want to start playing for Team USA again, and we have a whole nother redeem team situation. That could very well be the case, but I still think that it's beneficial to have these younger players on the rosters to save some of the veteran players for actual NBA games and to develop the other parts of Team USA in these big senior national team competitions. And yes, to me, that benefit would even outweigh the possibility of losing out on a few international national gold medals. And yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of opinions on this. I know that you guys have a lot to say, again, especially because I have a relatively large international audience. So I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of hate about the fact that I am so confident that this Team USA team can still go and win the World Cup. But having said all that, that is going to be the end of today's video. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say about it. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.